So at this point, um, we've got a uh, function to start to show our classes. The first show classes function really is to retrieve the data. To actually process it, this is show classes table. Very important to have the argument there, um, the property there, uh, the parameter there set up, because we're passing in the argument result.rows. So we're going to build a table here. This is not quite complete yet, however. Let's back up to uh, line 91 where we're starting to build our table. The, um, the table at the moment will be invisible. So let's add, a, let's add an attribute to the table of border, single quotes, one. Uh, we'll make a very simple one pixel sized border so we can see the edges of the table. If we don't, we'll have an invisible table. So make sure you're adding this as an attribute of the table tag. Now if you've used, if you've used HTML for several years, you might remember that tables were a popular way to build an interface. And then after a while, it fell out of favor, very much out of favor. Nowadays, you don't really want to use a table to build the design on the page. It's very, very passe. But tables are still very valid to use for data, to use a table for its intended purpose. This sign-in sheet that you all sign in here, this is tabular data. This is rows and columns of data. So for this purpose, tables still work. The old purpose, people would make a table and make a cell on the top left corner here to put the logo, and make another cell here to make a uh, sidebar and put another cell here for a footer. That was the old way. It worked, but it was not the right tool for the right task. Not the right tag for the right task. So if you've used tables before and maybe you learned like tables are evil, no, tables are still good if you're using them for the right task. If you're newer to web design and you never heard about that, ignore everything I said. Tables are good for tabular data and nothing else. Here our uh, table is no longer invisible. We've given it a border of 1. We also want to give this an ID because we are going to reference it later on, like when we want to um, change the table, or more, uh, more precisely, change an item in the table. This is going to be a list of the CRN, so we're going to have a column for the CRN of the class, a column for the name of the class, a column for the instructor, and then rows of all the classes. I want to click on one and make a change. Click on another one and make another change. Well, giving this an ID will uh, help us target our elements easier. Let's call this um, table class. This is a table for our classes. So, like I said, in between um, the sandwich, we're going to add the fillings. Well, first, we need to start off, when you have a, a table, you often have the very first row of the table are special headings that delineate what those columns are. So, we're going to write the TR tag, which has opening and closing. TR delineates a table row. Then we have the individual cells of the rows. And the very first row is a special row of headings. So each one of these is a heading of the row we'll have th, table heading. The first cell of the first row is this table heading cell. And this is where I'm going to display the CRN of the classes. Within the same row, but then a new table heading, a new cell, this is where I'm going to display the um, 
the class, the name of the class. So make sure here you've got this pair, th slash th for the first cell of the rope, th slash th for the second cell, and another th pair for the instructor. So most likely this is not going to colorize itself very well because it's inside of the string, inside of the quotes. So make sure you click to highlight, you should see the pair, that one will be instructor. Now eventually we're going to want each of these classes to be editable. I want to display a row of class information and at the end of the row I want an icon to click on to edit that row of data. I already know I'm going to do that eventually so I'm going to include a fourth column right here. Not quite a column but a fourth heading. And for the moment that heading, uh, let's write this. Um, ampersand n b s p semicolon. This is a non-breaking space. This is an empty space. If we simply put a space, it might not fill that cell with a space. So here we're forcing the empty space. Because eventually, the fourth column, because we've got a column of CRN, a column of class, a column of instructor, and a column of empty space. Eventually that empty column space there is where I'm going to have an icon to edit that row of classes. Go ahead and save it and run it. And click Show Classes. Oh, one more thing, I always forget this, display it on screen. We're building a string, but we haven't said display it on screen. Well, we've got that placeholder, that div. Next line, what did we call it? L div show. We've got that element on screen. We're building this, this nice string. We haven't shown it yet. Well, we're going to show it in this element, L div show, using the HTML jQuery method. Previously, we've done something like div dot inner HTML equals and then some code. That is equivalent to the jQuery method. We've created a jQuery based object and therefore we're using a jQuery method onto it. HTML. And in here, string. Process that string as HTML and display it in that element on screen. Now save it and run it. Show classes. And I've started to build a table in the first row of the table with this column, this column, this column, and an empty space. I've got all of this object data waiting. I need to then display it in the table, but that's what I've got so far here. Again, um, this can always be a little tricky. Make sure you check your pairs and all of that. We're starting to build the table. Let me show the table. Next, we need to build row by row. In my case, I've got seven uh, rows of data, seven classes that I've saved. I need to do a loop. I need to loop a certain number of times to start to display this data on screen. So after after My first row, tr, will do four. This is going to be a loop for a certain number of times. Var i starting at zero. i as long as it's less than data dot length. Data dot 
data is all the rows of data I've passed into this. This has a linked property. In my case, it's seven. I've got seven classes saved. As long as uh, as long as I've got as long as I've got uh, my i index less than seven, do this number of times. So I call in there uh, because then we increment the index i plus plus. So do it one time starting at zero. Then do it again becomes one. Do it again becomes two becomes three until we get to become seven. And then seven is no longer less than seven. The loop stops. What we will be doing multiple times is again string. We're going to add to the string. We're going to be creating another row. So with the zero with amount with the zero with item of data, make a new row. Then that'll become I will become one. Now with the next row of data, make another one, and then I will become two and do it again and again till we get to the number of times. But what we're doing here is we were we're building more cells. The very first row of cells is TH. It's a special cell, table heading. But every subsequent cell is a normal cell. So my very first row is full of THs. Subsequent cells are regular old cells, which are TD, table data. So TD slash TD. Just as a placeholder, this is where my CRN will go. Another TD. This is where my class will go. CL, CR, whatever. We're going to replace these with real data in a bit. And um, another TD. And one's instructor. And then one more cell. This is where we're going to have an icon to. Uh, this is where we're going to have an icon in order to. to edit. And at the moment we can actually make an icon here uh, ampersand pound x27 x270e semicolon that'll create a Unicode icon of a pencil so TD, it's a cell. That cell lines up with my first TH up there, CRN and I've got another TD. That cell class lines up with class, TH. Then another TD in lines up with instructor. And then you've got the final TH column of an empty space. That's going to line up here to create a pencil in that row. Save it and run it. It won't show the data just yet, but it should build a number of rows based on the number of classes you've got saved. We're going to need to break this up with a bunch of plus equals and plus quotes to actually fill in the dynamic data, but I want to see at least now that it's going to build my rows of information. Let me check mine. Show classes. So it's going to build these rows with a little pencil icon. If I add one more class, class ZZZ with instructor ZZZ and ZZZ, save, show, I've got another row. The data is not there yet, I'm not there yet, but now I've got, these are going to show all of those eight classes I've saved to my database with rows and columns. Okay, the tricky part comes into knowing this about breaking the this string. I'm going to break it into multiple pieces because I'm going to need to display dynamic data here and here and here. Okay, so 
So here in my case, end quote in that part of the string plus plus quote again. Start the string to show some cell, some cell, continue the string. Well, that needs to be the current zero index of the data that I'm passing in from the retrieval. So that CR there was just a little placeholder. What that needs to be is data dot ID. Uh, data no data index i dot id look. what's that look look dot id not yet we could do doc but then that'd be underscore id because we are looking at the data one level before the doc we can simply do, let's do it that way, just to be obvious, because that would make sense. Let's do it that way. So we've got the data, then we've got doc, and then inside of doc we've got underscore id. Let's see if that works so far. This should be enough for it for us to get something. Save it and run it. This will be currently zero in the docs. Show me the underscore id. So the first row should pop, the first column, should populate with our CRNs, hopefully. Show classes. There we go. So all my classes are being shown there alphabetically. If I had another class, class uh, uh, HHH, instructor HHH, whatever, I'm going to save that. Show that <clears throat> class HHH. Now, uh, alphabetically, yes, capital letters take precedence over lowercase letters. And it is alphabetical, but there are nuances. This would also work if we had done simply that, but notice how we have to write it there. Show classes still works. But just to, just to make it obvious to see the data that we've got there, that'll be good to do. So. So here then I'm showing dynamically a particular field. I'm going to do something exactly like that then for class. Maybe I'll break that into another line because this is getting to be a really long line. So I'm going to break this at um, maybe at this point there. I need the same thing here. That slash TD closes the, that starting TD, which is show me my ID. Okay, so then close the string plus after the dynamic data, another plus, another quote. So in this cell, that's why I wanted to write it as one long string first to show you these are these columns lining up with the headings. Then I'm going to break it up for readability. So then that's got to be data i doc dot name. That's our field that stores the name of the class. So we've got the stream of data, the i index value, the doc field or the doc property, and then the dot c name property of that. So if I save and run that, show class, now it's starting to populate the class column. This will not be alphabetical because it's based alphabetically on the CRN. So all of that so far in that column. Next we need the instructor column. Same concept. Uh, I'm going to break this into the next line. Uh, 
should see where we're headed. So, and that plus plus started again. Data i dot 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 c inst. class. There's the data then of the instructor. Most of it gibberish, but when I filled it in properly, CRM 222 is Android 2 Campos. 223 is Android 3 Campos. Android 1 is 111. 111 takes precedence of before 1223. Later on, then I want to put the pencil there to maybe spell that properly. And then maybe actually I don't need this class at all. That was a mistake. I want to delete that. So we'll have the ability to delete data from the database, edit data from the database. Here I'm showing I've saved data to the database. I've retrieved data from the database. If I run this over on Firefox, just to show you, here's Firefox show classes. I haven't saved anything in Firefox yet. This is not an error. I haven't saved anything on Firefox. And as I said, each web browser has an instance of the database all to itself. So here if I'm saving class 111, Android 1, Instructor Campos, save that, show that. We'll make it so that when you save it'll automatically show later when there's changes to the database. But for the moment it's, it's a little manual saving and showing these classes then are not conflicting with the classes over uh, that the da this database is not conflicting with the database on the other browser it's a different browser it's a different sandbox they're separate and protected on purpose you may think that's a limitation why doesn't one browser open another it's built this way it's supposed to work this way later we can make it more advanced of course that a certain database can be retrieved by other elements but here is the default We'll do one more thing, then we'll wrap up for the day. Again, this is going to lead us there eventually. I want to be able to click the pencil, so this Unicode character pencil here. I want to be able to click that pencil to edit this row of data. We're going to break that into the next line. And the difference here, the only difference we're going to do here is we're going to add a class to the pencil. We've been using IDs over and over and over because there was one unique thing to click on in the project to do something. Now I have, in my case, 10 pencils to click on. I'm not going to write get element by ID 1 and 2 and 3 and 3 and X. I'm going to use a class. A class can be used multiple times. So I'll attach the same class to all of these pencils. And the JavaScript, the jQuery, will know which one do I mean when we get to it next time. It'll know that if I click on this pencil, it means to edit the data of this row. If I click on this pencil, it knows to edit the data of this row. So let's add a class to this TD. Single quotes, btn pencil, btn edit pencil, or something. Single quotes, of course, or else you'll break your string. Based on that, later we can write some JavaScript to target clicking those pencils to edit this row of data. So I think that this is a good ending point for the class at this point. Here we have the ability now to save data to the database, retrieve it. We don't know how to delete or update yet. But based on PouchDB, we've got this. When we come back next time and you load up this same index, you save you load up the same HTML file, your data's gone because of deep freeze in this lab. But if we didn't have deep freeze, your data would still be here. Once when eventually we get this to a real app device, your data will always be there unless the person uninstalls the app. 
Um, we'll deal with that later. But here we started with a database. No server required, just some JavaScript and a web browser. Any general questions about what we've done so far before we wrap up? Yeah. On what line? ID can only be used once per project, once per screen full of data. And so if we try to add the same ID multiple times, that's technically not correct. So a class can be used multiple times, and we can reference classes sort of like how we have document.get element by ID. We can sort of do document.get elements by class, sort of. And we will then be able to target all of those elements at once, and we'll be able to know which one we clicked on to edit the right data. Okay, so I'm going to put a copy of my code up to this point in the network folder. We're going to wrap up at this point, have a little lab time. Thank you for taking the class up to this point. This is the last day of part two. When we come back next week, it'll be part three, a brand new class. We're going to take the enrollment process then, and we're going to pick up right at this point.